Catherine here, and I'd like to say welcome to all my fellow research rock stars out there. And today I'd like to talk about something that's been coming up in a lot of conversations that I've been having recently, um, and that has to do with hiring. And these days, a lot of market research and insights teams have really tight budgets. So when there is an opportunity to hire, we really have to be extra vigilant. Uh, there's that that hire is going to be so precious that we really want to make sure that we get it right. And it can be really hard um, screening people, uh, conducting really awesome interviews to really make sure that the candidates are going to be great is a really difficult thing. And part of that is because of the profession we're in really is a mix of science and art. And there's a lot of best practices and it can get pretty technical. Um, whether you're doing quantitative or qualitative research. And so figuring out what to actually ask people during an interview that's really going to reveal whether or not they have the right uh, factual knowledge as well as the right mindset can be really important. And so um, again, it's a conversation I've been having recently with a number of different teams, so I thought it would be a great one to tackle today. So let's talk about how we make sure that we've got the right interview questions so that we hire people who are really qualified. Now, obviously there are a lot of different types of market research and insights positions we might be interviewing for. Um, and for the purpose of this conversation, I'm gonna focus on survey research. Now, obviously there are gonna be different questions at, for people who are applying for different types of jobs that have different specialties that are required um, Different jobs are going to require expertise in different types of methodologies. Different jobs are going to be at different levels of seniority. So I'm not saying that these questions are a one size fits all, but these will be some good examples specifically for those of you who might be looking to hire people who specifically have sur survey research expertise so that they can really contribute to your team. Um, so the next time you're going to be interviewing people and you want to make sure their survey research professionals who are really truly qualified, these questions will be helpful. And part of the reason why with survey research, it's especially tricky is because there are a lot of people who think they're survey research experts. And in fact, they are not. They might think they're a survey research expert because maybe they've programmed a handful of questionnaires. Um, they may think that they're a survey research expert because they've taken a lot of surveys. But survey research, rigorous professional quality survey research is actually pretty complex. There are a lot of things that we have to know in order to execute these types of projects. So I came up with my list of 10 questions that if you use these 10 questions will really help you to ascertain the candidate's level of factual knowledge um, about survey research and also whether or not they have sort of the right mindset to think like a survey researcher. Now, in this, this video, you know, this would take me a very long time to go through all 10 questions and appropriate answers that we would hope to hear. So I'm just going to go through a few of them in this video. But if you like, the whole article is available at the Research Rockstar blog. So please do visit researchrockstar.com if you'd like to see all 10 questions. I know it's a little bit of an eye test here, but it's not on the blog. So let me just jump right in. So here's one good question uh, that I'd like to start with. I might say, describe a situation where you would recommend using a ranking question instead of a rating question. Now, as with any interview, it's really important to ask this question and then say nothing else. Don't give them any hints. Don't give them any clues. Accept perhaps eight to 10 seconds of uncomfortable silence while they think about it. But a qualified researcher we'll probably start talking before eight to 10 seconds. So what are the answers I'm hoping to hear? Well, there are a number of different things that would be correct responses, that would be valid ways of answering this, but there are a few themes that I'm hoping to hear. For example, I'm hoping to hear that the candidate is recognizing that rank order questions are a better choice if you need to understand priorities. Prioritization is a really important um, a very important and a very common sort of thing we need to accomplish in survey research. And an experienced researcher will know that 
If we over rely on rating scale questions, we may not get the prioritization that we need and that rank order questions are one of the options, just one, but one of the options we have to uh, build into our instrument, our data collection instrument or questionnaire, um, the ability to actually get priorities from our survey participants. So a correct answer here is gonna be the candidate talking about the importance of understanding prioritization. Maybe they'll even share an example. You know, Maybe they'll say, well, I recently had a project where I was doing research on home security systems and we needed to make sure that we understood what new features that we were planning on would be most important to our target market. And a couple of the features were uh, time of day programming and the availability of uh, receiving notifications by text message. And if we had asked that using a series of rating questions, we could have found out that both those items, um, probably amongst a list of five or six other items, uh, were consistently rated as very important. And that would have been a bummer because now I don't know which of those two things are really most important. All I know is that both things are very important. And the truth is, of course, they could both be very important. But if the candidate is doing research that is um, being used to inform product development decisions, then they really may have a legitimate need to get prioritization. And so if they talk about the fact that hey, we really needed priorities on this one because uh, it turns out that for product development purposes, we're coming out with a new software version of our home security system and we need to know which of these features absolutely has to be in the next release and which one could wait to a future version. So sure, we understand that both features are important, but we need to know, given a choice, which one is the most important so that we can inform that product development schedule. Um, and so those are all the kinds of things that I would really like to hear. If in addition, they just start riffing on the challenges of rating scale questions because they are subjective, then I'm even happier, right? Because again, there are no single right answers, but certainly a theme, if you're gonna talk about rating scale questions versus rank order questions is going to be about the fact that rating scales are extremely subjective and that can be problematic in certain situations. Um, and again, I also like it if the candidate talks about the business application. So if they told me that the reason why they liked rank order questions in specific situations was because of the business impact, again, being able to inform product development decisions, that makes me really happy because now they're not just thinking about I'm collecting data, they're thinking about what kind of data is going to be most useful for the business decisions that I need to support. So let's take a look at another one. I might have as one of my interview questions, when might you recommend an 11 point scale versus a five point scale? Now this question brings up a few different things and there are more than one correct answer. My, in fact, my, my, my good friend and of course, one of my favorite research rock stars in our profession is Jeffrey Henning. Uh, Jeffrey is the president of ResearchScape International uh, where he, by the way, writes a wonderful blog and his answer would be, Never. Uh, Jeffrey's not a big fan of net promoter score. Um, and, uh, and so he would, he would probably say never, and that would be okay. If the candidate says, I would never recommend an 11 point scale, fine, but tell me why. Why is that, right? I want a real answer. But some other things that could come up from this question that would reveal factual knowledge and actual experience might be things like, well, in general, I like a longer scale if I'm trying to measure attitudes where I'm expecting a lot of variability. That's a nice answer. That's somebody who understands, well, first of all, the concept of variability and the importance of having a scale that is well suited for the population or topic of interest. It's very easy for researchers to just assume everything's going to be a five point rating scale. And um, I want my researchers to think a little bit more than that. Right? I don't want them to just default to whatever is popular or common in questionnaire design. I want them thinking carefully about what kinds of scales they should be choosing. So whether they say never uh, is okay, as long as they can tell me why, um, but hopefully they'll talk about the benefits of sometimes having a, a longer scale versus a shorter scale. And uh, 
And that would be, that would show me that they have factual knowledge. And again, that they have sort of a, a critical thinking capability that obviously we want in a survey researcher. So let's do one more. This one is a scenario. And I often find when I am interviewing job candidates, um, either for myself or I'm helping other folks um, with hiring, I like scenarios because a scenario question can be presented in a way that really does an excellent job of revealing factual knowledge as well as judgment, right? And both of those things are very important. Again, because we are in a field that's a combination of science and art. So I want not just factual knowledge, I want that judgment capability. So here's the, one of the scenarios I came up with. And there are a few more that I use in the article as well. Let's imagine a colleague has done a survey of 45 people to measure satisfaction with auto leasing terms. He reports to you that overall satisfaction is 2.375. What questions or concerns might you have? So what questions or concerns would you have? Now, there are probably a couple of things that pop up right away, right? So those of you who've been doing survey research for a while, like me, <laughs> for decades, um, there are a couple of things that immediately come to mind. And again, it's okay if the candidate varies from some of these things, but I would say that these would be like sort of the minimum set. And then if they have things in addition, that's cool. But at minimum, there are a couple of things that I am hoping they mention. First of all, I'm hoping that they say, I think I'd ask my candidate, uh, excuse me, I'd ask my colleague, um, why 45? Why was that your sample size? Was that a pretest? Um, was it a survey of a known population that is known to be extremely homogeneous? That is, I'm not expecting to see a lot of variability in their attitudes. Was there some other reason why it was such a, a small sample size? Um, and there can be legitimate answers there, right? But certainly a survey research professional would know to say, huh, sample size of 45. Can you help me understand why that was the sample size? Related to that, another good question. Okay, the overall satisfaction, satisfaction was 2.375 out of what? Was it a five point scale? Was it an 11 point scale? Was it a seven point scale? Was it a four point scale? We don't know and we certainly shouldn't assume. So somebody who's a real survey research pro, again, is going to be somebody who thinks very precisely and they would want to know. Related to that, they should also ask about the variability. All right, so the average was 2.375, but what was the standard deviation? And if they don't mention standard deviation or variability, to me, that would kind of be a red flag, right? Because those are pretty basic data analysis concepts that would be relevant in this scenario. And I definitely would want my survey research candidates to have that be sort of a top of mind sort of um, way of thinking about whether or not the data I'm looking at is likely to be of value or not. So again, those are a few different things I would hope to hear. There could be other things that they mentioned, but those would be sort of my minimum set that I would like to hear um, in terms of this particular scenario. So I hope those three questions with my ideal answer content is helpful to you, uh, whether you're planning on hiring a survey researcher um, in the immediate future or not, or maybe you're planning other types of hires, but maybe these questions can be sort of a, a model for the types of questions that you could construct for the specific skills that you're going to be qualifying people for. Um, again, if you are interested in all 10 questions, please do check out the article on the blog. Um, and if you have any questions, do let me know. Um, I'd also like to point out that this is available, uh, this conversation is available both on YouTube as a video podcast and as an audio only version on Apple Podcasts. And I would like to ask you a favor. Would you mind giving this episode a little social love? If you could like, subscribe, maybe even share the link with your friends or colleagues who are in the market research and insights space. I'd really appreciate it. Um, the more research rock stars we can get these episodes out to, the better. And again, I appreciate your time. And uh, you can always post questions to me here um, in the comments, or you can contact me over at researchrockstar.com. Thanks. Have a great day.